welcome back to defenders wise i am dr paul thank you for joining us today defenders wise is all about presenting christian faith based on evidence please visit my website www.drpaul.org this year we are raising a fund to help orphan children and medical missions as we are going through this pandemic there is so much hunger and sickness all around us please join this ministry to make a difference visit our website www.drpaul.org and make a tax deductible donation those of you who already joined this ministry i sincerely thank you for your participation now we deal with questions on a daily basis almost today's question is Craig Evans's view of the gospel of John is it correct excellent question Bart Arman is the professor of religious studies at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill Craig Evans is the professor of religious studies at Houston Baptist University one of you raised this issue from a debate that happened between Bart Arman and Craig Evans i gave the link to this video uh, please watch that video so that you can understand the context of what i am going to say at 1 hour 34 minutes in this video you will see a conversation between bart terman and mr craig bart terman asks him in the gospel of john jesus says a lot of i am sayings very famous sayings Before Abraham was I am I am the way the truth and the life no one comes to me but by me I am no one comes to the father but by me I am the light of the world at one point of course he says the father and I are one my question to you is do you think the historical jesus really said this thanks then dr craig evans responds i think most of these things were not uttered as we find them by the historical jesus i suspect we don't have too much of a difference on john my view is that the gospel of john is a horse of another color altogether it is a different genre john is often compared to wisdom literature it is like wisdom is personified hokma lady wisdom are in greek sophia she wanders the streets she calls out to the people she does things nobody would read that and think did you see wisdom going down the street the other day nobody would think that it is a literal person what is mysterious to me about john is once you say that perhaps we should interpret the i am statements as he is confessions he is the light of the world he is the truth he is the bread of life confession of the johannine community that likely generated that version of the gospel john is a gigantic parable that makes john so tricky at that point bart arman gets to smile and say so now we can toss out john what mr craig evans says is very troubling and dangerous bart arman says that john did not write the gospel of john and craig evans agrees with him let us take a brief look at the gospel of john there are four gospels in the new testament matthew mark luke and john the first three matthew mark and luke are called synoptics because of their similarities to each other they have similar content but the gospel of john is different there is something grander about its content and style the theme itself is mind boggling god of israel came to us in jesus who is the author of this gospel when was this gospel written to answer these two questions 
let us see the internal evidence and external evidence let us start with the internal evidence now who was john the apostle john was one of the 12 disciples of lord jesus christ he was the anger of the two sons of zebedee mark 120 says that john and his brother james were preparing their nets when jesus called them their father zebedee and their hired servants were in the boat they were rich enough to hire servants their mother's name was salome matthew chapter 27:55 informs us salome was supporting jesus's needs during his ministry she was a rich woman who provided financial support to jesus john was born in a rich family at the time of jesus as it is now Jews would put a lot of emphasis on education especially the rich Jews they were sending their children for higher education as far as Alexandria in Egypt and Rome in Italy John was probably helping his family's fishing industry on the sea of Galilee and was also learning from the best teachers of his time but Armon says no way according to but Armon the glorious gospel of john the glorious greek language in this gospel and its philosophical and theological frameworks cannot be ascribed to a simple fisherman like john he cites acts 4:13 in acts chapter 4 we see john and peter preaching the gospel of christ in jerusalem they were summoned before the sanhedrin the supreme religious council of the jews they were warned not to preach about jesus of nazareth they replied we cannot be silent we cannot help speaking about what we have seen and heard not those words folks what we have seen and heard john was preaching about the things he had seen and heard he was not preaching from somebody else's experiences he was testifying about his own experiences with christ his gospel came out of his sermons it is easy to write a book when you are a full time evangelist or a preacher you preach like 10 sermons and it will become a book john first preached about christ and later his preaching material went into his gospel and his epistles evangelists love preaching sermons and writing books there is no reason to assume that john the passionate preacher in acts chapter 4 did not sit down to write a gospel acts chapter 4 verse 13 informs us that the members of the sanhedrin were astonished to witness the courage and the wisdom of peter and john because they could see that they were ordinary men with no special training in the scriptures in the greek it says they were agramatai agramatai they were unschooled in rabbinical tradition today anyone can uh, talk like a theologian we don't find it surprising but in ancient times only theologians would give speeches on theological matters only philosophers would give speeches on philosophy john and peter were giving passionate speeches on theological subjects that does not mean they were illiterate it means they were not trained in theological subjects like rabbis and priests that is why the council members of sanhedrin were shocked at their wisdom because they were not trained like apostle paul for example so bart arman's views are highly presumptuous he provides no evidence from external sources i call it soft bigotry of low expectations coined by president george w bush your fisherman right you wrote the gospel of john you must be kidding me 
you are too dumb to write such a glorious great prose modern religious scholars like bart arman look at the disciples with such preju- prejudicial views but it is illogical john who was born in a rich jewish family could have easily obtained education in classical greek institution or he would have taken the assistance of a highly educated person when he sat down to write his gospel but also should not relegate these disciples to perennial or perpetual ignorance john and peter witnessed the resurrection of christ they were so excited they became leaders in the early church they probably thought now we are no longer fishermen we are leaders of a new religious movement let us go to a jewish seminary and educate ourselves it helps us to reach our jewish brothers and sisters with the gospel of christ let us also go to a greek academy and study greek language and greek philosophies it helps us to reach the gentiles with the gospel of christ many christians do that even today they say uh, i just became a christian i want to do some ministry but i will go to a seminary and study theology for a few years i did the same thing after medical school i took a break and went to a bible seminary to study theology for 5 years and after that i came back to medical practice so a lot of people do that so the disciples probably did something like that after witnessing the resurrection of jesus they probably put their occupations aside went to a jewish seminary and became proficient in jewish scriptures and greek philosophy definitely we have no evidence that they never did so we should not say in acts for 13 you are illiterate so you must be illiterate illiterate for the rest of your life there is no logical connection but arman was just throwing his own presumptions at the disciples he also says we don't find john's name in the gospel of john now that is true actually that adds weight to the view that john actually wrote this gospel a person producing a forgery in the name of john would make sure john's name appears all over the gospel but that is not the case folks let me give you a personal example my mom wrote two books you don't find her name in those two books i asked her her mom why didn't you write your name in the books you authored i don't see your name even on the cover page she told me son when people read these books only jesus should be glorified my name should not draw their attention away from jesus she was so humble that she would not even put her name in her books about jesus saint john took a similar approach i don't want to put my name in this gospel because only jesus should be magnified should be glorified in every page of this gospel john was humble not to put his own name in this gospel john is mentioned 20 times in other gospels and not even once in the gospel of john he described himself as a disciple whom jesus loved and one reclining on jesus's bosom so out of the 12 disciples only three disciples were in the inner circle of lord jesus christ peter james and john peter is named in this gospel several times so he is not the other James was martyred too early at the beginning of the church we read in Acts chapter 12 so he is not the other that leaves us only John we read in John chapter 21 verse 24 he says this is the disciple who testifies to these things and who wrote them down 
the other is testifying to the trustworthiness of his gospel after the death of jesus john took care of mary the mother of jesus she moved with john's family to ephesus in turkey john can rely on mary as the source of information on jesus's birth childhood and our own life he has mary next door mother of our lord as one of the best sources on the life of jesus right in his home the internal evidence clearly points us to john the disciple as the author of this gospel then we can also consider the external evidence if you look in church history if you look at uh, the available sources from the first three centuries of Christianity. How many people did say that John wrote this gospel? Many. How many people rejected the view that John wrote this gospel? None. Zero. I challenge both Bart Terman and Craig Evans to give me just one source that rejected the view that John wrote this gospel. Let us start with Irenaeus. His life was between 120 and 140. He was a disciple of Polycarp who was a disciple of John. Irenaeus explicitly names John as the author of the gospel. Tertullian, Clement of Alexandria, Origen, Dionysius of uh, Alexandria, Eusebius, the writer of Meritorian Canon. These church fathers were scattered all over the world from Europe to Asia to Africa. That means the Gospel of John was widely read in the early 2nd century. I asked Barth Ehrman to name one Christian or non-Christian author from that period who questioned John's authorship of the fourth, fourth Gospel. Just name one. He is throwing out his own speculations and assumptions as facts of history. The internal evidence and the external evidence are strongly in favor of John as the author of the fourth gospel. Now coming to Craig Evans, he labels himself as a Christian scholar and it is good and I have his books in my library. But he adopted Bart Ehrman's view that the gospel of John was not written by John but somebody else pretending to be John. And that is not right. These I am statements in the gospel of John, these glorious I am statements given by Lord Jesus Christ in the gospel of John were actually came from the mouth of Jesus. Craig Evans should not be saying that somebody else uh, belonging to John and community made these things and they just wrote this gospel as if Jesus wrote them. That makes this gospel a complete forgery. That makes this gospel a false book. If Jesus did not say those things and somebody made this up, that is just falsehood. So Craig Evans should not be saying such things. He has no evidence. The internal evidence, external evidence clearly points us to John as the author of the fourth gospel. So I will stop here. I will continue tomorrow. There are many other things, especially the man the evidence from manuscripts. We have uh, John Ryland's manuscript. I'm going to talk about it in the next part. Uh, please watch that part also because we're going to see how the timing of this gospel clearly shows us John is the author of this gospel, folks. Please share your comments, like this video, and subscribe to my channel. Thank you. God bless you.